So we have a uh, Kiran Nadir that will join us right on stage, right, to talk about uh, uh, succeeding with API programs, right, from Silicon Valley banks. This is our friends from the West, West Coast in the U.S. Uh, that are uh, joining us and waking up. Thank you. Thank you to be there. Hey, Mary, how are you? How are you doing? Good, good, really good. You are one of the most appreciated speakers from API Days London. Uh, so this is why we wanted to re-invite you. Thank you for accepting, right? Sure. No, thank you. Glad to be here. Very excited to be here all this. Yeah, as we are. Uh, so, yeah, I invite you to share your screen. Okay. And let's go for 20 minutes of thought, leadership, and vision from Silicon Valley. Absolutely. Okay. Let's can you see my screen? Yes. Can you go full screen? Yep. There you go. That's perfect. Enjoy your time with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, uh, this is my third time presenting at API Days. And it's always exciting to be here in front of this audience. Uh, I covered API platform strategy and operating models uh, last time around. I'm excited to now talk about how to really bring this program together. And uh, let's head right on to it. So uh, just talking about uh, business expectations, right? So every API program ultimately is trying to achieve business outcomes and align with business expectations. And as uh, we all we have all experienced in our past and even currently what we are doing, trying to get done from a business perspective, it's Agility, security, reliability, and client experience, right? These are our four pillars when it comes to what we want to deliver through an API program. So as we think through these things, uh, we should uh, we wanted to start thinking through what are the key principles of a successful API program and how do we align that those uh, things to the business uh, requirements, expectations, right? So when we think through that, there is uh, three key principles. I'm sorry about my mouse here, but uh, three key principles, right? Is visibility, consistency, and reusability. And ultimately that drives your stakeholder experience, your customer experience. And what does those three principles mean and how do we make sense of that, right? So visibility, what we want to achieve through an API program is end-to-end -end visibility of all interactions, whether it's north-south traffic or east or east-west, right? And what that means is when we uh, think about um, how APIs bring that enterprise together in terms of providing that view of what is going on in the universe of the enterprise, having that end-to-end -end visibility provides you uh, uh, the, the, uh, the ability to have impact on your customer experience. It helps with proactive detection of issues. And we've, I'm sure all of you have been on uh, production calls trying to figure out where the issue lies. So the key principle here is making sure that we have, uh, as we think through an API program, is to have that end-to-end -end visibility. And then compliance uh, with audit and regulation, right? A lot of, uh, especially with PSD2, uh, there is a, a requirement for us to have that visibility and making sure that this is a key, key principle will help us improve our customer experience, strengthen our security posture so that we, have, we don't have traffic flowing around without uh, visibility, right? And improve compliance. Consistency. Now, as enterprises have grown over the number of years, we see a lot of proliferation of different standards and different ways of building APIs and interfaces. So one of the key tenets here or principles here from a consistency perspective is making sure that all APIs are consistent based on standards. They have very good documentation. They have standardized authentication and authorization. Again, this should be a common uh, capability that's built as part of your API program. Uh, design first approach. We want to make sure that as we design these APIs, we are approaching it from a design first, that is thinking of the consumption side, thinking who are going to be our consumers, right? And again, standardized patterns for north, south, east, west, and automation of de development, deployment, and monitoring. So what does that give us? Uh, whether it's internal or external developers, it gives us that consistent experience. It aligns us with better with industry standards, 
it reduces time and investment with automation. And the last one, which is uh, a result of the first two, which is visibility and consistency, is really the reusability part of it. Right. So, how do we uh, think of reusability? Reusability is once when we use the design first approach and we have this visibility of all transactions or all interactions within an enterprise, then we are essentially designing for consumption. Right? And we are providing that self-service tool for publishers and consumers. What that gives us is that all our APIs are built with consumers in mind. There is an enterprise catalog of public and private APIs. It allows us to discover new opportunities quicker, and it also helps speed to innovation. So before, as we think through those uh, key principles and the business expectations, the next question that we should think about is who is the audience that we are serving? And my view initially was we should look at it from an internal and external perspective. But if you think of it, really, it's internal and external consumers of APIs because there will be public and private APIs. And then there will be API publishers, which will be publishing those APIs. Right. So the, your four key personas are the app developers, the business stakeholders from the consumption side, and the API developer and the business stakeholders from the publishing side. So really, consumers and publishers are your key stakeholders. So when we look at those stakeholders, we also want to define what does really success look like, right? So from a consumption world, we have to think of that consumers should be able to access the developer portal, discover what they need, understand the API, test their use cases, request access to production. And publishers should be able to discover the APIs that they need to deliver the solutions, design a new API, develop, test, deploy, measure the performance, manage their API consumers without direct interaction with anyone. And this is the key here, right? Is that we want to build it as a self-serve model for both consumers and publishers. A lot of time we focus just on the consumption side because we talk about a hey, build API uh, from a consumption side, do that, right? But equally important is the publishing side because you want to enable uh, publishers of those APIs to be able to do it quicker in an automated fashion, aligned to standards, but you don't want to have a very heavy process in there. You want that to be self-service so that folks are able to do that uh, in an easier way. So now, as we think through, uh, as we look at these audiences and our stakeholders, uh, the next thing is, hey, what are the work streams that we need to establish as part of this API program, right? And the four primary ones that uh, I've landed on uh, mainly from my experience doing this at various organizations is standards and governance, platform operations, developer experience, and change management. Right? And we'll talk through all of these. But, and we'll talk about the KPIs. And these KPIs are very directional. Everyone, every organization should be able to identify their own KPIs and what makes more sense for them. But this is more saying that don't just define the work streams and the features, but also think of the KPIs that you're going to measure uh, to say whether we are successful or not. So when it comes to standards and governance, uh, we do want to have API standards, guidelines, a governance model. Um, as lightweight as possible. You want to automate the, this as much as possible so this is not a heavy process where teams have a heavy hand holding needed for governance. Make sure that the governance is lightweight through automation and uh, design tools. The design processes need to be established. How do you do an API design? What are the tools that developers will need to be able to leverage the standards? Because a lot of times, uh, your standards and guidelines and your patterns can be very overwhelming to developers. So how do you make that easy for the developer that's developing that API, right? And as you think through uh, an enterprise program, some of the KPIs that you want to think about is how many BUs are adopting those standards? Uh, how much time does it take to design an API? And the number of APIs designed to those standards. Right. So this is kind of giving you a view of, hey, I did define all of these things. Now, how do I measure the adoption? How do I make sure that we have APIs that are built to standards? Platform and operations, there is infrastructure design implementation. There's common capabilities, uh, like such as logging and monitoring. There is authorization and uh, authentication, testing automation, pipeline, deployment, and support. Right, All of these 
need to be built out and you have to think through how is it that you're going to be uh, uh, making this easier for developers that are developing those APIs again. Right. And some of the KPIs that you want to look at is how much time does it take to deliver an API from start to end? Uh, how many APIs have been published uh, from a operations perspective or uh, you have to think of uh, with the standing up of this platform and all the logging and monitoring and all the automation, how many incidents are we looking at on a, on a weekly or a monthly basis? What is the MTTI and MTTR? Right? These are the things that you want to think through as you build out your platform. The one other key aspect is the developer experience. Now, your developer portal is ultimately the door to all of your APIs, right? And uh, we have to think through the, a lot of things on how do we make it easy for developers to be, whether they're internal or external, to be able to leverage those APIs. So there is persona development, and we looked at a few of them in the in the in a couple of slides before. But there has to be a journey mapping around those personas. Right? What is the journey for a developer versus the business stakeholder? Then you have to go through your UI UX design to figure out what is your onboarding process for developers, what approvals are needed. You have to figure out your sandbox capabilities, uh, your workflows for test introduction. And you have to figure out how you're going to do the community development and management, because ultimately your developer community is the key to growth of your API program. And for that, you also need some kind of user analytics on your portal, right? And some of the KPIs you have to think through is what is your, uh, this is a very, very commonly used term uh, in the API world. So time to first hello world. What is the conversion rate? What is the conversion rate from somebody registering on your portal to going live, right? And there are various stages in that journey that you can track and understand what is the impact or what are the challenges that your consumers are facing. Then you have to think of from a experience perspective, how many support requests you're getting. Uh, is it easy enough for folks to do this on their own or are you getting a lot of support requests and you're spending a lot of time and effort trying to solve this? Right? And figure out, think about the drop-offs. How many people just came, landed on your portal and you know didn't do anything, right? So thinking through the developer experience is key. Change management is often overlooked. Uh, it's, it's absolutely key to uh, your API program. So as you uh, think about rolling out this program enterprise-wide, you would think of how are you going to impact that cultural and mindset change, how do you enable developers and uh, different functions within the team from operations to uh, support folks to be able to understand what the change is. Right? And the change is wide ranging when it comes to API. So you've got to think through API training for uh, technical and non-technical folks. You've got to think through how do you provide that standard and guidelines training, whether it's self-paced videos, how do you provide blogs and videos, uh, do demos, and champion programs. This is a really important thing. As you think through uh, scaling your program, you want more people across the enterprise uh, adopting your standards and guidelines, adopting the platform, uh, using the developer portal. So coming up with a champion program, or a, in other words, a trainer trainer approach is absolutely key. Hackathons and newsletters are also key. This is making sure that you have regular communication with all your stakeholders, uh, informing them of all the great things that are happening, informing them of changes that are coming, so making sure that you have regular communication and not one off. And some of the KPIs that you can think of when it comes to change management is that how many BUs are leveraging the platform, a number of APIs being delivered, number of champions across different BUs, and you can think of different, uh, from a training perspective, you can think of how many are, if you are developing some kind of a certification process, then how many developers do you have certified now, right? So making sure that you're establishing these work streams and identifying how we are gonna measure each one of the, them for success is absolutely key to uh, having a successful API program. Now, tying back to the key principles, this is not a reference architecture. This is not a technical architecture or an infrastructure diagram. This is just going back to the key, key principles that we talked about, which is consistency, visibility, and reusability, right? So what are the key areas where those key, key principles apply and how do we make uh, think look at it from an API platform perspective is 
consistency, having an API repository where the publishers are publishing those APIs and common objects and things like that. You have your enterprise catalog and all that is your source of truth for all your APIs. That is what is driving your consistency. For reusability, it's your develop, developer portal, right? As you publish these APIs, you will have uh, more and more users that will be coming to the portal before they go anywhere to look for APIs. So making sure that that portal user experience and uh, documentation is up to par is important. And visibility, we talked about this earlier. This is looking at both north-south traffic and east-west traffic, right? And making sure that you are have that end-to-end -end visibility for every transaction on any, every interaction within the enterprise. And where will we take us, right? Uh, going back to the business expectations, we want to enable that uh, agility and reliability and security and where APIs will help go with uh, aligning with this uh, approach of uh, having a successful uh, API program is going to be, uh, it's going to allow us to get to this composable enterprise, right? where everybody has visibility into what APIs you have, what are the interactions, how to use them, the documentation is there. This will enable you to align with your business expectations. Lastly, I want to leave you with uh, what we have done as part of the community building uh, on the SVB developer portal. And uh, we are continuing in this community, but essentially this will be our developer hub where we are publishing our blogs and videos, which, which is being leveraged very well across the device. And this is open. You can go to developers.s blog and look at this. Uh, definitely would love to hear uh, and engage more and understand. Uh, that is all I had. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mary, back to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this presentation. Um, we have a question actually from Brandon who asks, in terms of change management, uh, it takes a lot of time to set the concept internally. Oh, sorry, I need, I need to read there. Uh, do you think uh, there needs to be a step down EPM mandate? Right. For, Absolutely. For business units for leadership addition to program. Absolutely. I think it, it's both uh, top uh, down mandate is absolutely critical. Um, at the same time, even if you don't have it, having a, a solid change management uh, approach is will definitely help bring everyone together. Yeah. Also, I have a question about the fact you are seeing Bali Bank. It seems you are in one of the most innovative places. How much the ecosystem pressure there for you to innovative stuff and to explore a new product with API? Maybe you are breaking up a little bit. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Sorry, the question is you are Silicon Valley Bank. So uh, you are evolving an ecosystem where there's a lot of innovators. How much pressure it puts on your teams to have, let's say, an uh, innovative product by API? So uh, if I heard you correctly, Mehdi, you're asking uh, the pressure on our team, on my team to provide or develop more APIs. Is and that correct? Innovative. And innovative because you're, you're really innovative ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. I think the pressure is always there, right? Um, what, what we want to make sure is that uh, even while delivering with pressure, and, as you think through an API program, the key here is that you are not going to get everything right on day one, right? It is an evolving process. It will take you time to do it. Uh, the key here is how do you uh, create that framework of being able to prioritize what is absolutely critical to your customers and your internal uh, stakeholders, right? And those are the features and capabilities that you want to develop first, right? And that is how we, uh, we are approaching it at Silicon Valley Bank, which is making sure that it's not about getting everything right. It's about getting something right at the right time, right? That is the key here. And you continue to evolve and innovate as time passes on. Did you see over the last years more customers or partners asking directly for APIs as a competitive advantage to work with you, 
Absolutely, right? If you think of it, the 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 not just the enterprise, but even our customers are looking at that composable way of consuming different assets, right? Uh, from financial institutions, and there is a lot of push about banking as a service. End of the day, it's it's about enabling our customers and. Our